Hey, Dr. Christensen here with you. I want to talk about autoimmune screening. This was inspired by a question that came in. I think it's super important. Um, and here it was. Hi, Dr. C. I have a low thyroid and never lost weight. My doctor did a multiple autoimmune reactivity screen to see if I have other autoimmune diseases. It looks like I have lupus, leaky brain, and possibly other autoimmune diseases. I'm completely freaked out. Where do I start? Amy. Okay. Amy, this is to you personally <laughs> and to a lot of other, others of you all who may be in the same situation. So Amy, two things I want to go into. Uh, first one is diagnosing autoimmune diseases. What we know, what we don't know, and what are some of the speculative fads that are going around right now in natural medicine. The second one is what your first concern was, how do you lose weight with hypothyroidism? Okay, so the first one. So the good side about where we are right now, the really good side, is that we're much more aware of autoimmune disease than we were in the past. People think about that. It's now, I think, close to being a household term, and doctors are less apt to ignore that. The other really positive thing is that people are aware that their lifestyle habits, their, their diet, their stress load, their activity levels can have a huge impact upon their immune system and how these diseases play out. You know, whether or not they get them, whether or not they progress, whether or not they get better or not. People have a lot of control over those variables. That's awesome stuff. So now here's the negative side. The negative side is that, in my opinion, many practitioners are using these terms way too lightly and passing them around without giving it the same kind of vetting that they really do deserve. For starters, I want to talk about how not all diseases or symptoms are really autoimmune in origin. Many are, but I think we've gone a little too far this way. I did a quick Google search for autoimmune disease list, and the first thing that I popped up actually listed a large number of diseases that are just not autoimmune. That included endometriosis, eosinophilic esophagitis, fibromyalgia, Lyme's disease, narcolepsy, pandas, pernicious anemia, restless leg syndrome, subacute bacterial endocarditis. Now, you could make an argue to where there's roundabout ways that there could be immune factors with those for sure, but they're not directly driven by the immune system attacking itself. And that's the definition of an autoimmune disease. The main mechanism of the disease is the body's immune system attacking the body's own tissues. So many things that are lumped in that category are not autoimmune. Now, the other big thing that I think makes people overly alarmed and think too much about this are symptom lists. I took a look and just checked Dr. Google for autoimmune symptoms. And funny thing, but I saw 10 symptoms show up verbatim on about five different popular functional medical doctors' websites. And the list talked about joint or muscle pain, weight loss, insomnia, heat intolerance, rashes or hives, difficulty concentrating and focusing, feeling tired or fatigued, easy weight gain, hair loss, abdominal pain, dry eyes, mouth, or skin, numbness and tingling hands or feet, or recurrent miscarriages or blood clots. Now, these are all super important symptoms. These are all things that should be addressed and taken care of. And in that list, there's things that are quite different from one another. The recurrent miscarriage, for example, or the numbness and tingling, those are different than the brain fog or the fatigue. And the important thing to realize is that some of these symptoms are things that happen to perfectly healthy people, probably for no known significance. You know, sadly, our bodies, even when we're healthy and things are working great, our bodies don't work perfectly 24 7. And just by definition, there are moments in which our energy is going to be higher than it is at other times, right? There's no way around that. Our energy is not static. We all get tired at some point. We want to go to sleep. Or if we're doing some activity, whether it be mental or physical, there's times at which our body starts running low on resources. So normal, healthy people get fatigue. And because of that, they'll have times to where the energy is higher and lower. And one could look at that and say, oh, well, my energy is lower right now. And that may be normal or healthy. So this is a delicate thing because I don't at all want to invalidate those that have serious struggles with fatigue, chronic fatigue, limitations. 
But one message I want you to get is that it's normal to not always feel perfect. That's how things work. Our bodies are limited. So there's that. Now the other part about these symptoms that I want to draw out is that, yes, these symptoms can be caused by autoimmunity, but there's almost no shortage to how many other things that are not autoimmune conditions that could cause those symptoms. And I think it really does people a disservice to look at a list like that and say, oh wow, I have some or perhaps even many of these symptoms, therefore I must have auto, an autoimmune disease. And this is a real pitfall. So what I see in situations like yours, Amy, is that a doctor will hear your symptoms and I think they mean well. You know, they really want you to have an easier time managing your weight and functioning better. And they think about what they've read and maybe their training and what are some popular ideas being passed around. And they think, oh wow, autoimmunity is so big and so underdiagnosed. And these are some of the symptoms of that. We should then call these likely autoimmune issues or we should call this general autoimmune problems. And then the other thing that happens is doctors will often take a next step. In some cases, some they'll just call it autoimmune right there and start various treatments assuming that it is. And when it plays out well, they may give some good general guidelines that may be helpful anyway. So even if you didn't have autoimmune disease, they might give some good feedback, like get more sleep, manage your stress, eat more broccoli, don't eat Twinkies, <laughs> you know, take care of yourself. And whether or not it was autoimmunity, you could get better. So that's okay, but it's kind of like getting lucky. And I don't like counting on getting lucky because if there were some deeper problem or some different problem, maybe you wouldn't get better. And maybe you would lose some time in which you could have been making headway had you known what you were dealing with. So I always love to have a clear diagnosis when I'm proceeding. It's, I don't think it's acceptable to just do vague things and hope that it works and then retreat. I think it's better to have a clear sense on what's happening, treat it properly, and if you're progressing, then you know one of two things. Either, or I'm sorry, if you're not progressing, you know one of two things. Either you're not doing the right treatment or it was not the right diagnosis, and you've got a finite number of things to deal back with and take care of. So the next step that many doctors take now is they'll do varying types of autoimmune tests. And I'll talk more about specific ones in some of the broad screens. But a difficulty is that blood tests for autoimmunity have very, very high rates of false positives when they're done without full context. So they're not good screening tests. What I mean by that is you couldn't take a thousand healthy people and do autoimmune tests on them and from those tests alone know who had autoimmunity. That can be counterintuitive. You would think that an autoimmune test is like a pregnancy test. If you're pregnancy, you're not pregnant. They're not like that at all. In a proper diagnosis, they're one small piece of data. So someone that doesn't really have sufficient suspicious symptoms, if they're given screening tests, those tests can make it look like they've got a problem that they really don't. So case in point, you talked about having signs of possible autoimmunity and hypothyroidism and possible lupus. So I updated myself on some of the last literature on that. The best used autoimmune test with the most data points around it by far is called an anti-nuclear antibody screen, also called an ANA. Now, in your exact situation, if we know someone's hypothyroid, we do an ANA test on them, and from that ANA test, we think they've got lupus, that false positive rate can be anywhere between 50 to 100%. So what that means is that if we had 100 people just like you, Amy, and all of them who were hypothyroid had positive tests for lupus, at least, at least half of them don't have lupus. By many measures, all of them would not have lupus. So that test is not a valid instrument, and it doesn't actually say you have lupus. Now, that's about one test. You talked about leaky brain as well, and possibly other autoimmune diseases. So that issue I talked about with the, the false positive, meaning the test says there's a problem when you don't have a problem. So like that pregnancy test, for an example, if, if I peed on a stick and it said I was pregnant, I'm pretty sure that would be a false positive. That's what I mean by a false positive. Or if a woman who was clearly not pregnant, the test said she was, that would be a false positive. And the known rate of false positives for autoimmune tests 
is rarely less than 50%. In many cases, it's in the 60 to 70% range. So it takes a lot of distinction besides just looking at a few symptoms and glancing at a blood test to say someone has autoimmune diseases. Now the panel you did, I looked at some panels like that, and these are now commonly available. And they mean to be thorough, and that makes sense. You think you want to cover a lot of bases, but the drawback about checking a lot of things is you're going to have a higher rate of, just a higher number of false positives show up. So I've seen tests that will measure as many as 20 or 30 different completely unrelated types of autoimmune antibodies, some of which are tied to known diseases, many of which are honestly just speculative. They're not tied to any known human diseases at all. So in your case, things like the leaky brain phenomena, we can still see those high false positive rates. And someone like yourself, Amy, to have a test done, the one you did, it looks like it had about 22 different antibodies that were measured. And if you take an average of the 66% false positive rate for autoimmune tests, that means that by random chance, a perfectly healthy person will have about 13 of those come back positive. So nothing wrong whatsoever. You could look at a test like that and you could say, oh my God, I'm falling apart. I've got 13 different autoimmune diseases. And that's exactly what's happening right now, Amy. So a lot of holistic functional practitioners that I think are well-intentioned and want to make a good difference don't understand this thing about this positive predictive error. And they're doing blood tests based upon some superficial symptoms. And from those blood tests, diagnosing people as having autoimmune disease. And it's not serving us. So you've got real symptoms. You've got things that are not right. We want to know what those are. We don't want to lead you on a wild goose chase. And heaven forbid, if there were something problematic, we would want to know what it was in as timely of a fashion as possible. So you had the option to figure out your best resources for that. So how would you really diagnose autoimmune diseases? Well, this falls under medical specialties. So as someone who focuses upon naturopathic endocrinology, those in the endocrinology space, they can do a good job diagnosing autoimmune thyroid disease. We can diagnose Addison's disease, type 2 diabetes. So autoimmunity of endocrine origin, endocrinologists and those who have more naturopathic, holistic, integrative type training can do a good job both diagnosing and looking at safe treatment options. If we think about autoimmune neurologic diseases, that would fall under the heading of neurologists. So MS, myasthenia gravis, Gilbert syndrome, those are things that a neurologist can do a good job diagnosing. And then more so rheumatologic conditions. You mentioned lupus, so rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, scleroderma. And what's different about a specialist is that they're going to look at your family history, they're going to look at your symptoms, your test values, also probably some imaging tests, and maybe even repeating a few of these things over time. And honestly, anything less of that is not a real diagnosis of autoimmune disease. You cannot diagnose it based upon symptoms or based upon blood tests alone. There's such a high rate of false positives on both ends. Now, if your choice was to only see a conventional doctor, if you didn't yet have a specialist who was naturopathic or integrative, then see a conventional specialist for your diagnosis and see them to at least entertain and be aware of conventional treatment options. Once you have a clear diagnosis, and if that person doesn't really get about lifestyle medicine, that might be a great time to then seek out a, another physician who may be more general, naturopathic, integrative, functional, whatever else it is. That person could do a good job with that diagnosis and assuming that you weren't missing out on some window of opportunity for treatment and you weren't foregoing possibly helpful treatment options, then you could talk a lot about doing lifestyle care, mind-body, hugely powerful diet therapy, or if you did need some conventional care or if that was a good option, these other things could still really serve you along with the rest of it. Okay, <laughs> so that was a long, long rant. Now, let's go back to what your real question was and what you were seeking out help for. So why can't you lose weight with hypothyroidism? You know, the short version is that what we've seen in our clinic at Integrative Health is that when someone does go from hypothyroidism to optimal thyroid function, probably about 20% of them 
just lose weight. So, and that's, that's of the subset to where they did gain weight. So let me back that up. Say someone had become, gained some weight, couldn't figure out why, they got diagnosed as being hypothyroid. That's almost always Hashimoto's. But let's say that's what happened. They had gained a bunch of weight. So once they reach optimal thyroid function, roughly 20% of the time, their weight just bounces off. No special efforts. So even when your thyroid causes the weight gain, reversing the thyroid alone doesn't always reverse the weight gain, sadly. But my experience is that pretty much everyone in that remaining 80% is at least able to lose weight. So it's not a straightforward path. It may take a different strategy than it does for just general weight loss. But the first thing is really identifying where you're at and regaining back to optimal thyroid function. You know, all of our docs at Integrative Health do a great job with that. Um, certainly take a peek at some of my Thyroid 101 type blogs and articles for some guidance on that. But it comes down to if you're on medication, getting your dosing perfect, getting a, the right nutrients to support your thyroid and not block it, getting foods that are a good fit for your immune system, detoxing your body, getting your daily rhythms dialed in, getting your digestion fixed and healed. And when you're healthy, weight loss can happen. My experience is that weight loss is best done as a project, not as a lifestyle. What I mean by that is I encourage someone to take a block of time and expect there to be needs to eat in ways that are not normal, long-lasting. So a normal, healthy diet rarely produces weight loss. It does take some level of fuel restriction. And by fuel, I mean carbs or protein. You've got to restrict fuel in some way to achieve weight loss. But you don't want to live your life in that restricted state. So hope that was useful, Amy. First thing is, I doubt those diagnoses that you've got. I highly question those. I don't think you've got all those autoimmune diseases. Second thing is, I believe you can lose weight. Let's get your thyroid squared away and get you on a road to feeling great again. Everyone else, take, take good care and talk with you real soon. Bye-bye.